heard about it and thought, oh, uh, that sounds like an excuse to, you know, re-enfranchise something to make money. It could be a bit cheap and cheesy. And then I found out who was involved, and I thought, it's definitely not going to be cheap and cheesy. These guys are very good writers. I knew Stephen. My mum had done um, coupling um, a few episodes of that, Sarah Alexander's mum. And Mark Gatiss was a huge hero of mine as a student with League of Gentlemen. And I just, so I knew the stable was good, and I knew their involvement in Who, and I knew what they'd done with that. And I, I thought, well, I've got to read it. And I read it, and I completely fell in love with it. And then I went to meet them in, uh, in, a, in a flat in Holland Park, um, Sue Virtue's mother, Beryl Virtue. Um, once Sue Virtue was called Beryl Virtue's daughter, but now I think it's the other way around. She's so extraordinary. But they're both extraordinary. I mean, Beryl is a massive titan of the industry. I'm sure she's done many of these conversations. Um, she's she is a legend, a legend. And I didn't, but I I don't think I'd ever met her before. So she she came and it was her flat. And I wasn't aware of that. I knew I was meeting Sue, Mark, and Stephen, and to read for it. And uh, I think one of the scenes I did was definitely the one in the first episode where I get John to come back to the flat, and I've got I just want him to type a text for me, and I'm sort of uh, reposed with the steeple hands, and and he's just disgusted that I've said it's urgent, it's important, can you make it? And uh, he just comes over and basically is a secretary for me. Um, with the, in the study of studying pink and uh, and so I was doing the scene and, as, and oh no just before I remember Beryl coming in she had tea and biscuits and I sort of turned to Sue and I went is that is that Mrs Hansen <laughs> and she went no that's my mother <laughs> um, okay it's a, not a good start not a good start at all okay forget that happened forget that happened start again cancel and continue and uh, I did I, I, I made them laugh a bit and it seemed to go well and you know I, I knew Mark as well as an actor we were in Start of a Ten together and we really got on so it was fun it was a lot of fun and I thought god this could be great I, I would really enjoy doing this just as I was getting on my scooter I got a call from my agent saying they're really 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 keen for you to do this and I put my helmet on well I finished the conversation <laughs> first otherwise that would have been painful um, and uh, I said uh Christ, this could be really exposing, and in a good way, but I thought this is really, this is a very iconic character, and whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it, there's gonna be a lot of focus on it, as there always is with any incarnation of the great, great consulting detective. So I took a bit of a deep breath, and I thought, do I wanna do this? Is this the moment to do that? Because I kind of, you know, there'd been other things hovering around that I might have pursued or might have done, and I just went, no, no, I. I, I kind of want to carry on doing the work I'm doing, which is there. It's getting recognition, but it's you know it's just it's leading to the next job, to the next job, and I was fine with that. I thought this is a really big sort of step into the limelight, and then I thought well, it's really good material. I'm gonna have fun doing it. We did the pilot; it was great. The BBC loved it. Said one and a half hours, and then that was it. 